Hey everybody, it's Dean. I wanted to come back today and uh, talk to you a little bit about the number of the beast, um, the number of man, and it's number 666. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I thought that was, and um, I'll read the verse first. Uh, Revelation 13, 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So six, six, six. And um, you know, I wanted to, to speak about that number. It's a mark in the right hand or on the forehead. Deuteronomy 6, 8 says uh, regarding the Lord's commandments that we should bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. So I very much believe that the number of the beast is spiritual in nature. You know, it uh, will have an earthly application and that's what we see through uh, many different things um, you know, uh, the powers to be show us that we are 666. We are the beast. Until a man is born again, he is uh, number six. Uh, man was made on the sixth day, and uh, they need to be regenerated and go from the earthly to the spiritual man. And um, they need to be turned. So you kind of have to almost lose yourself in order to find yourself. Uh, Jesus said that, the words that he said were not his own, but they were the Father's who sent him. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was uh, with God, and the Word was God. And uh, nothing that was made uh, was made outside of that, outside of Jesus. And uh, Jesus told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And um, so we know God is spirit, and that he dwells inside our temples of our minds. And we're told to resist the devil, and he will flee. And, um, you know, it's, you always heard it said, you know, whatever you feed the most is what you're going to become, you know. So if you feed the flesh, then you're walking as a man in the flesh. But if you feed the spirit, then the things of the flesh, you know, will, will die off. They don't become important because you have your mind heavenly minded instead of earthly minded. And, um, you know, if you love the world or the things in the world, then the love of the father is not in us. So we want to always be heavenly minded and, you know, try to care for the least of these because then you're doing it for Christ. And uh, that's kind of why he came to pay the price for sin. The law was kind of a schoolmaster until the fulfillment came in Christ. And, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, took the punishment that the law shows us is due upon each one of us. So, you know, God's blood was on our hands uh, when we crucified him and decided we wanted to do it our own way. And at that point, we're the number of the beast. And, um, you know, we're washed in the blood because Christ also paid the price and redeemed us uh, from that fallen state. And, um, you know, we're cl cleansed through the reading of the word and through the water. John seventeen seventeen says, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Uh, so his commandments are a light to a path. And uh, we know that uh, we're kind of born again as we uh, as we learn to uh, to take his yoke upon us. In the book of Psalms, sixteen ten, you know uh, the Lord or King David speaking to God, and you know in reflection that's God's spirit or uh, even the words that Jesus had in him. And uh, you know we accept it as our own. You know though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death in Psalm twenty three. We shall fear no evil. So, you know, we're able to use those words for ourselves. And in Psalm 1610, he says, he will not leave our soul in hell. And we know that, you know, goes back to uh, Jesus being in the ground in the tomb for three days and three nights. And Gagatha, which is the skull, right? It's a picture. And uh, then you had um, uh, Jonah in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And, um, 
you know, you also have the witnesses, which are prophesying for three days uh, in sackcloth. So, and, uh, you know, the dead in Christ rise first. And scripture says that um, we are dead in Christ and we are dead and our life is hid in Christ. And if we be dead, why do we walk according to the rudiments of the world? And, and uh, just uh, many um, reflections in scripture as to how we are dead. Your dead men shall live together with thy dead body, you know. And Christ is uh, the body, you know. He was broken for each of us. So we eat his body by, you know, eating his word and making it part of who we are. And uh, we're joined to him. We've become little stones and he's a chief cornerstone. So anyway, uh, the fact that he won't leave our soul in hell has a little bit of a indication that we may be in hell a little bit now. Um, you know, we're in the pit and we're fashioned from the same pit that Christ was fashioned from. Uh, Pat Benatar had a song called Hell is for the Children. And uh, I'll read a couple of lyrics to you. It says, they cr cry in the dark so you can't see their tears. They hide in the light so you can't see their fears. Forgive and forget all the while love and pain become one and the same in the eyes of a wounded child. Because hell, hell is for children, and you know that their little lives can become such a mess. Hell, hell is for the children, and you shouldn't have to pay for your love with your bones and your flesh. Right? So uh, our life is kind of a living sacrifice, and we're on the altar of God, and uh, we're burning for him. And, um, you know, it's a, a spiritual picture of what we go through in order to um, become made whole. Uh, Paul had a messenger of Satan, and it was a thorn in his flesh. And it was a messenger of Satan to buffet him and uh, to keep him um, humble. So the Lord's good at humbling us through our experiences that we go through and uh, burning off our impurities through the fire to try us. To see what type of metal we are and uh, Haggai says the silver and the gold are his and everything in the temple was uh, sprinkled with the water and the blood meaning the water is a sanctification or the regeneration that comes through the reading of the word and um, faith comes by hearing and um, goes back to man being made on the sixth day in the six stone water pots you know turned into the new wine and you don't put new wine into old wine skins you know, it's something new that the Lord did uh, when he, um, you know, bridged that gap uh, between a sinful man and a holy God. And uh, it says those who have been forgiven a lot will love a lot. And uh, he wants us to forgive each other. And that's why he showed that example where he washed our feet and uh, we're supposed to wash the feet of uh, our brother, our, you know, of each other. But anyway, 666. Um, John 3.3.3 3, 3 says that he that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. So right before the Lord lets loose with the four winds on the four corners of the earth, the four angels that are holding back the four winds, he says to seal the servants of his, uh, the foreheads of his servants. So I believe that's a seal. When you receive God's testimony, you believe he is true. Uh, but remember, Nicodemus came to him at night. Night is a, a time of judgment. And uh, that's when Jesus said, well, if I tell you about earthly things and you don't believe, you know, how much more if I tell you about heavenly things? So we have to recognize that even when we think we know, we don't know as we should. But uh, some examples of the number of the beasts being foretold just on the earthly aspect of things, uh, they tell us that the, uh, the earth goes through space at 66,600 miles per hour. So you got the 666 there. And they say that the tilt is 23.4 degrees. And uh, if many of our presidents and leaders have been Freemasons, you know, the, the right angle, you know, they call it the right angle is 90 degrees. 90 degrees minus 23.4 is 66.6. .6. So either science is off or they're trying to show us something. And, uh, you know, we're not supposed to argue about science, falsely so-called, but we should make the Lord's words our own. So we should believe him with what he says about uh, the things on earth, such as the moon giving its own light. If we don't believe that, then we may not believe what he means about salvation. 
and uh, how, you know, I, in the book of John, he said that he felt it needful to speak about the common salvation, but others have crept in, turning the license of God into the, you know, that they can do whatever they want. And uh, so he wanted us to kind of maybe expose some of the deeds of darkness, even though I know the Lord uses the darkness for his own benefit. Um, Satan was the anointed cherub in the Ezekiel, and uh, he was perfect in all his ways, and his tablets were perfectly formed. So he was a, a singer, a worshiper, a praise um, angel or cherub. And, um, you know, if he was a covering cherub, then God's over it all. In Isaiah 40, I think it's 45, 46, it says that, God does all things. He creates the evil, and he creates the darkness. He creates the light. The Lord does all things. So 666 is also uh, found on our UPC codes. So uh, back in the day when they first came out, um, people thought that that was a mark of the beast. If you uh, look into that, you can see that the, the stripes on both sides of the UPC and the one down the center are sixes. So that's how they kind of labeled, I believe, everything with... Uh, with that. Um, at least that's how I believe it came to be. So, you know, the Lord shows us through the speed of the earth, through the tilt that we're told. Uh, man is telling us the, uh, these numbers to us, and they're showing us uh, right up front that we are the beast. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes 3.18 says, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. And, um, you know, I always go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 11, that neither is a man without the woman nor the woman without the man in the Lord. So the two become one. And then a three-folded cord is not e easily broken. So God joins us. He lives with us. And uh, the beasts go into the ark, I believe, two by two. I said uh, in Genesis 7, 9, male and female came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. So I think there's a purpose that God made man and woman and uh, wanted to get us together um, because it is a great picture of his love for us and how he marries us as Israel. And Jeremiah, he gave Israel a divorce and he buys her back through, he redeems her through Christ and his blood. And, um, you know, the Lord says in 1 Timothy 4.10 that he's a savior of all men, especially of those that believe. And uh, he's the savior of all men, each man in their own order, Christ, the first fruits, and then those who are his at his coming. And the Lord does not desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if the Son of Man be lifted up, he will draw all flesh unto himself. So we see that picture in the, the idea that, uh, you know, it's a temple story. So um, you know, God has a perfect plan. And uh, we listened to Iron Maiden today, The Number of the Beast. And it, it says that, uh, you know, the memory is from our mind. And we see things and uh, in the nighttime. And is it real and not just fantasy? And uh, the reflections of my warped mind staring back at me. Because we are the beast, and our minds are kind of warped. Uh, if we say we're without sin, we make God out to be a liar. And, um, you know, that's why he sanctifies us in his truth. So he makes us afresh. And, um, you know, I, I, was, I was reading uh, today about uh, the Queen of Sheba, how she heard about the wisdom of Solomon. And she went, and, and she checked it out for herself. And it said that her spirit died, or... You know, she lost her spirit. Um, and uh, I, I think that's why the Lord tells the young children to take his yoke upon them at a young age. Um, because, you know, it, it's conforming to his will from our will. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to uh, talk to that because that's a big thing today, the vaccination, whether or not it's uh, conditioning for the number of the beasts. And there will be a time. And to buy or sell, you'll have to, uh, you know, get special permission to do that. Um, just as a, it's an earthly reflection of a spiritual aspect that uh, in order to, uh, to buy or sell today, uh, you have to kind of think and join together in unity. And it's kind of 
uh, tying you know the beast number to your forehead and uh, doing what the beast wants you to do and the lord says if your right hand causes you to sin if the right hand offend thee cut it off and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell so he says whoever offends one of these little ones you know, it's better that they be not to offend one of these middle little ones or they're going to be thrown uh, with a millstone tied around them. And, um, you know, I think that's what it is. So, you know, if it's true that vaccinations are bad for us and they were being caught in a trap, you know, it, it's better if you're in that line of work to cut it off. So whatever you earn your living from is kind of your right hand, what you do. And uh, once we see that what we do might hurt people until uh, we have a clear understanding, it's better that we cut that off. And uh, in the same way, if what we look at or uh, what we put into us uh, defiles us, it tells us to cut out our eye. And, um, you know, that's who do you follow? And that's why the Lord always uh, says that we're his sheep, that we hear him and that we follow him. So... Anyway, uh, God bless you, and I hope that, uh, you know, you consider what the number of the beast is. And, um, you know, there's a lot of theater going on, but even within the lies today, there's a truth and uh, that's as sharp as steel. So we see a lot of false things going on, but within the, within the lie, they're teaching something. I mean, for instance, we know that we get a corona for those that are watching for the Lord, and they name it corona, you know, corona, uh, and COVID-19, you know, sheep to the slaughter. And um, anyway, you know, tear down the wall, and we will, you know, or that's what Reagan said, tear down the wall, and uh, President Trump said, build that wall. And uh, Pink Floyd said, all in all, you're just another brick in the wall. So I hope that uh, we can see sometimes that uh, what we've learned has been a lie in many cases. And, um, you know, to, to find the way to the Lord, you have to sift through a lot of things. And he promises that the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, he gives to us so that we can discern that. But some people do love a lie and they love to make a lie. And um, we want to make sure that if we love a lie, that we try to gouge our eye out so we don't love it so much. And if we're uh, involved in a lie, we should cut our arm off so that we don't uh, do it, stop it. And uh, it's not good to hurt the children. You know, Christ loves the children, and we should too. And uh, we should love our older folks and take care of them. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, the fruits of the field start to get a little bit better you know, the children, their tongue cleaves to the roof of their mouth for lack of the fruits of the field. Not a lot of love, joy, and peace going on right now. And uh, there's a lot of fear. But perfect love drives out all fear. And uh, once the light comes into us, uh, then we don't have to fear so much. Because uh, he who fears is not made perfect in Christ. And perfect love drives out all fear. So God loves us. He's perfect, even in his judgment. And, um, you know, Amos 8.4 says that the, it's an evil time right now, and the prudent just keep silent. So God is working out uh, his judgment on the world right now. And, um, you know, hopefully 2021 uh, will prove itself to be a, a wonderful time when the Lord uh, comes back eventually and rules uh, with a rod of iron. And um, it'll be peace for a long time. Peace in the valley. God bless you guys and your families. In Jesus' name, amen.